So today we're taking a look at ASRock's X570 Creator motherboard, and this one tends to want to differ itself from the rest of the herd by having Thunderbolt on board. And you don't just get one of those, you get two of those connections running through the one controller, and they've also added a DisplayPort 1.4 in on the motherboard. And you're probably thinking, why would anyone want that on a motherboard? It's, I think, mainly to do with someone who wants to reroute a graphics card DisplayPort then into the motherboard, and you can then send that through the Thunderbolt connection. So that's its biggest differing points on the board. And it is coming in with a 499 USD price tag. And in terms of Australia released, they said they actually don't intend to release this board to Australia. So its market, I guess its niche is very small. And with that said, it's still going to get a review just like any other motherboard around here. And as you just heard in the intro, that noise on the chipset hub was obnoxiously loud. As soon as I turned on this motherboard, I was like, that's not right. And then I went into the BIOS, updated the BIOS, and the noise was still there. And the only way I could get rid of this noise was to essentially uh, put in a custom fan profile, and then it started quieting down, where you'd want to have this uh, set to 70 degrees, where it can ramp up higher after that. And then before that, you can have a 50% or lower fan speed. But the thing is, it's easy to do that, but it shouldn't come out of the box this loud. It's really going to annoy people who want to buy this motherboard and use it for everyday purposes. I know, for instance, I edit videos, and if there's noises going on here that are just too loud, then they can really get to me. And one of those things is a 40 mil fan spinning real loud. If that's off a high pitch noise, it's really annoying. So you do want to keep that fan speed down as low as possible. And so I'd like to see ASRock update that in a future BIOS where they're releasing a better fan curve profile so people don't have to go into the BIOS and be confused. And if you don't know what you're doing there and you just wanna get this board for say the upcoming 16 core, which we'll get onto the VRM test soon, then you don't want to go into the BIOS and mess around with things that you probably don't know how to change. And so that's one of those things that I like to test for and give recommendations for. So the first critiquing point for ASRock is with that X570 chipset hub down the bottom where the fan is okay, it does a good job of cooling. We'll pull up the temperature numbers for you guys, where the chipset hub, even with the NVMe spam testing the speeds, only went up to uh, 71 degrees in the software, and that was with the uh, 2080 Super also running a stress test at the same time. So the chipset hub doesn't get that hot, and if you've got a custom fan profile, it doesn't need to get that loud either. And I also tend to test in 24, 25C environments. However, this was done in 26C ambient environments because things are heating up here at the moment. Though besides my biggest critiquing point, which is easily fixable, is the X570 at 499 US dollars going to have everything else check out besides its Thunderbolt add-in connections. Let's roll that intro and then check it out. Welcome back to Tech Yellow City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with the X570 Creator Motherboard review. And we've got here a 12 plus two phase VRM where 12 phases are dedicated to the CPU V core. And for those MOSFETs, they're using uh, the Infineon IR3555s. And then the, also for the MOSFET driver, we've got the Infineon IR3599. As for the PWM controller, we're looking at an IR35201. And that also extends to the two phases for the SOC voltage. So they're using the same MOSFETs on both the V core as they are for the SOC. Now for the chokes, we've got 60 amp chokes, and then we've got 12K Nichicon caps for the capacitors. So the VRM, in terms of it checking out, it's got a solid chunky VRM on board, testing out the 12 core here at 4.3 gigahertz, all core overclocks. It did an absolutely fine job where we saw a maximum of 63 degrees surface temperature, and then on the heatsink, 52 degrees, and then in the software, 68 degrees. And this was in an Ida 64 stress test. So absolutely fine. It will handle the uh, 16 core as well. I'm sure of that. Though, of course, if you are running AVX2 instruction sets through this thing, then you may wish to uh, tune down the offset a little bit. Say, for instance, drop it down 200 megahertz because that will put a lot more strain on the CPU and the VRM. Though, most people, myself included, I'm not using that instruction set and I do heavy productivity. So this test is very realistic for that. But let's move on now to some other temperature tests and the PCIe Gen 4. Uh, this board was more than capable of running the new Corsair MP600 at uh, over 5,000 megabytes per second. I posted up a tweet on Twitter uh, 
asking people to post ludicrous speed memes because this is the fastest speeds I've seen from a single NVMe M.2 drive. And it did so whilst only getting a heatsink temp of 56 degrees. So the heatsink, which is connected to the fan on the bottom NVMe slot is doing a good job of cooling down the NVMe drive. Though further looking through the features on this board, I like to go through the BIOS, tell you guys if it lives up to my standards. And the X570 Creator, it's got this new gunmetal uh, gray and blue look going on the motherboard itself. And that extends to the BIOS where they've updated the aesthetics for this board. Though one thing I'll find out that's missing is the uh, fantastic tuning software, which I actually uh, personally like for visually setting custom fan profiles. It's very easy to do and it works with your mouse. So I was a little bit disappointed to see that excluded from this motherboard. Uh, they do have the RGB control software on board, which you can control through the BIOS, but there's actually no RGB lighting on board this motherboard itself, unlike some of their other X570 boards. So I guess it is geared up towards creators that don't really care about RGB lighting at all. Uh, though going through the overclocking features, that's exceptional with ASRock. You can get all the settings, load up XMP profiles, save your custom profiles in the BIOS. Nothing's changed there. But as I said earlier, I would like to see them bring back that fantastic tuning software, especially, and also update that custom fan profile for the chipset heatsink hub. Now moving on to the onboard audio where we've got the Realtek 1220 and uh, running the test here, we've got 10 to 20 Hertz, a 0.07 decibel drop off, which is phenomenal. Two to uh, 10 Hertz, we've got a minus 1.5 decibel roll off. And then after that, we've got a pretty much flat curve. I'll show you guys the THD numbers as well. Um, I'm still waiting on someone to teach me how to read these precisely, but they do look a little bit better than the previous X570 motherboard I took a look at. Uh, the channel balance itself, the left and right channels is perfect. The cross torque is minus 80 decibels, though yet again, we've got another board coming through here that suffers from that cross torque problem when you raise the volume above 91 and over. So we've, basically, if you set the volume to 90 and under, you're gonna be fine. The cross torque's gonna work as usual, but 91 to 100, you're gonna get this weird leakage from the right to the left channel, which is unusual because it's usually from the left to the right channel. So it's still there. Basically, if you get this motherboard and you wanna use the onboard audio, keep the volume level at 90 or below. In terms of the mic import itself, they've done a really good job of making sure there's practically no noise whatsoever going through that mic import, as well as the line in. So this will be great for creators. Though again, if you are serious about audio, I would step it up to something professional. I did notice some noise suppression turned on with this microphone. But of course now moving through some of the other features on this board, we've got a 10 gig Ethernet uh, Aquantia solution on board, which is why we're looking at that expensive price tag. You've got the Thunderbolt and now a 10 gig port and testing out the speeds of this as well as the Wi-Fi 6, which is also really fast wireless internet, uh, tested out absolutely fine, phenomenal speeds from both. And then you've also got a one gig Intel NIC on board, which uh, also pre-installs itself with Windows. So I do like this combination. Basically, you don't have to worry about uh, sort of plugging up any other USB ports from other computers and downloading the driver and then copying them across if you've got this computer. So because the Intel installs by default. And then going through the rest of the ports on this board, we're looking at a BIOS flashback feature as well as USB 3.2 Gen 1, two of those up the top, PS2 port, and then a USB 3.2 Gen 1, your two type C's, which are actually Thunderbolt connections, and then another type A Gen 1 below that, and then two Gen 1 3.2s below that too, and then manual 5.1 out, as well as your rear optical in, and then a DisplayPort 1.4 in, and a HDMI out. So interesting that they've gone with a DisplayPort in over and out this time around. And then above that, you've got your Wi-Fi antennas. And then the last of the features to go through, we've also got Bluetooth 5.0, as well as two USB 3.2 Gen 1 out connectors for the front output headers. So you can have four USB 3 ports in total. And then you've also got a 3.2 Gen type C connector. So you can have one of those. So you can have five USB ports on your front output connector, absolutely fine. Well, technically seven if you wanna use the USB 2 as well. So it's got a lot of those ports available. And of course, who could forget your 12 volt and five volt addressable RGB headers and your power and reset button and the clear CMOS button, which unfortunately is inside the motherboard as opposed to outside. I do prefer to have that button on the rear input output shield and be able to hit that easily there. But now it's conclusion time. So wrapping up things with the X570 Creator motherboard from ASRock, I do give them props for putting Thunderbolt in as well as a Thunderbolt controller, even though they can't, I think, legally say that on the box. 
this as well as that mini ITX board both have Thunderbolt but for some reason I was much more impressed with the mini ITX motherboard and that's because it came in at a good price point and it still had Thunderbolt 3 on board and the VRM was phenomenal for that price point for that mini ITX solution and of course the fan out of the box there was nothing wrong with that board and I honestly would prefer to purchase that over this if I needed Thunderbolt 2 because that VRM was more efficient as well. I think that got around 90% efficiency score versus this, which was getting around 80%. So that was interesting to see. And this one's coming at 499 USD. It is feature packed, eight SATA ports, of course, all that USB connectivity and the two DisplayPort inputs as well as the PCIe Gen 4 NVMe slots and all the connectivity. It's really got it all going for it, except they do need to go back and, in my opinion, add some of those features to the BIOS and redo that custom BIOS fan curve profile for the Southbridge heatsink chip, which is running way too loud, in my opinion, out of the box. And that's just my opinion. I wouldn't want to go out and buy a motherboard and then be listening to that all day, every day. Even though it's easily fixable for me, it may not be easily fixable for people out there who just want to get, say, for instance, a 16 core when it comes out, Precision Boost Overdrive 2, get some 32 gig RAM slots and have an epic workstation, but you won't be so epic if that fan noise is sort of creeping into their ears. So at the end of the day, this board does have a good feature set, does have a solid VRM, does have solid onboard audio, does have solid connectivity. But again, ASRock, please get onto that BIOS update and fixing those fan profiles as soon as possible. But also in terms of putting a graphics card over that Southbridge heatsink fan, I put the 2080 Super over there, I tried a few other cards, and there still is a little bit of breathing room in the worst case scenario. So it's gonna be fine, I just think they need to change that fan profile ASAP so it doesn't give people uh, ear cancer. And the funny thing is I'm pretty like tolerant to noises. Like I don't really get annoyed that easily. And this was really bugging me. So anyway, solid board if you need the feature set. Otherwise, if you don't need Thunderbolt and you don't need those fancy display port ins and stuff like that, definitely go check out some of the other motherboards I reviewed here on the channel. But if you do need this feature set and it is for you, then uh, you may wish to get it and then customize the fan profile or wait for a BIOS update from ASRock. And closing out this video, we got the question of the day from Splinter. He says, could you flash a 5700 XT onto a 5700? And the answer to that is I will give that a shot for you guys and probably make a video on that. I'll probably include it because I've got an upcoming video where I wanted to test the Arctic Accelero on the 5700 XT because I have had good results in the past with that cooler. It's very quiet and it's a beefy solution. So we're gonna chuck in the BIOS update and see what we can do. But in the past, I do remember certain uh, AMD cards could be flashed to higher models and then some vendor cards couldn't be. So it's a luck of the draw thing. I guess it depends on the model release from the vendor and sometimes it can be done. So I'll look into it for you guys. Hopefully I can release something for you. And with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also let us know in the comments section below what you think of the X570 Creator and uh, some of those noises, but also if you think ASRock's doing a good thing by including some of that proprietary Intel stuff on AMD's side of the fence. I do like seeing that and it is pretty creative. Anyway, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.